Hey, everybody. Oh, hey, everybody. Uh, any fans of The Room here? Uh, is there anyone who hasn't seen The Room who's in attendance? Oh, <laughs> no shame in that. Uh, <laughs> tonight will actually be the perfect introduction to it for you. Um, everyone else, you, you'll, you're going to have a good time. Uh, so thanks so much for coming. This is part of our annual in-house film festival, the Cynadelphia Film Festival. There's free program guides right up front. Please take one on your way out. Uh, big thank you to festival sponsor HERS for all the free chips and popcorn. Still time to help yourselves. Uh, big thank you to the Deadly Prey Gallery out of Chicago for the uh, hand-painted Ghanaian posters that are on the wall. Those are all real African films. Uh, wild, wild stuff. And, um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, this occasion is actually Greg Sestero's third time uh, here in this building. Uh, this year marks his fifth anniversary. Greg! Uh, Greg. <laughs> and, uh, of course, he could pick any number of venues in Philadelphia to go to, but he chooses Philomoke each time, and I thank him for that. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Sestero. <laughs> I was roommates with Tommy for one year of my life, and I swear to you, it is something you need to try <laughs> between the eight, ages of 18 and 22 because it is, it's otherworldly. Um, and it was during this time that Tommy and I uh, were trying to become actors, and on the night of the Golden Globes in January of 2000, um, I took him to see a movie called The Talented Mr. Ripley. I had seen it with a buddy of mine a few weeks earlier, and he's like, if you continue to stay friends with Tommy, this is what's going to happen to you. <laughs> and I didn't really believe it, so I took Tommy to see The Talented Mr. Ripley, because the night of the Golden Globes, I was really depressed. I knew how far I was away from actually going to the Golden Globes. Tommy was like, Hollywood is so stupid. <laughs> they don't know anything. So we saw The Talented Mr. Ripley and Tommy was engaged throughout the entire film and that's what gave him the idea to write a movie. He said that when people see it, they won't sleep for two weeks. <laughs> he said, if Hollywood want big drama, this is big drama. And he, I would play Johnny, our American guy. Uh, he would have Lisa Blondie girl and you would play his best friend. Mark, like this guy, Mark Damon. <laughs> so he started writing behind the black curtain uh, in our apartment, because half the apartment was blocked off with these black curtains that looked like a stage. And he started typing behind these curtains, and then he disappeared for a while, then he came back um, nine months later with this thing, and he said, I read perfect part for you, let's make this movie. I sat down and I read it, and it was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever read. It was seven characters that all sounded exactly like Tom. <laughs> and, uh, it really is, like, I don't know why I kept a copy of this original script, because it's, it's, um, it's the first unedited version straight from Tommy's mind, but um, it's one of the greatest things I've ever read. So we're going to perform it tonight, or read it tonight, and um, yeah. I can't wait for you guys to experience oh, yeah. this, what I did 18 years, la 18 years later. So, uh, and then we did end up making it to the Golden Globes after all. So... <laughs> I got to experience really the highs and the lows throughout these last 18 years. So anyway, let's um, let's jump into it. I'll uh, I guess I'll have to play Mark. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's uh, we'll bring everybody out. Uh, we'll go in the role of Peter Matthew Schmidt. Everybody. <laughs> role of Michelle, Caitlin Feeney. In the role of Claudette, we have Julia Selly. Uh, in 
the role of Lisa Jackie Baker. And finally, uh, in the role of Tommy, we have Jim Burns, everybody. And our narrator stage director will be Bill Rick. Such a lush. <laughs> the Room by Tommy P. Wiseau. This play can be played without any age restriction. It will work if the chemistry between all the characters makes sense. Human behavior and betrayal applies to all of us. It exists within ourselves. You love somebody, do you? What is love? <laughs> you think you have everything, but you don't have anything. You have to have hope and spirit. Be an optimist. But can you handle all your human behavior or others' human or others' behavior? You don't want to be good, but great. <laughs> Act one. You can see the Golden, the Golden Gate Bridge, sunrise behind the bay, then an ex external shot of an apartment building south of Market Street. There is a shot of a window of the room. It is furnished simply. As we pan across the room, we see a man and a woman asleep and partially naked. The alarm clock rings. The man reaches to the clock and turns it off. He sleepily arouses and puts on his shorts and walks slowly to the bathroom. He closes the door, pan back to the woman waking up. The man comes out of the bathroom and smiles tenderly at her. I am not a slave here, am I? Did you like last night? <laughs> yes, I did. Pause. What time do you have to be there? He pulls a suit from the closet and throws it on the bed and starts dressing. Where is my coffee? She gets out of bed and puts on a revealing gown and goes to the kitchen. What time do you have to be there? He is yelling. I told you many times! 9.30! <laughs> I have my promotion to think about. Promotion, promotion. That's all I hear about. Here is your coffee and English muffin and burn your mouth. <laughs> He sits down at the table, drinking and eating. Old man donkey lets me know today. I have to think about our future. Well, at least I don't have a promotion to think about. You have too much competition in the computer field. <laughs> I can handle it. You worry about yourself. You sound like we have separate lives. We will be married next month, Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well... He stands up. Thank you for breakfast. <laughs> he kisses her on the cheek and leaves. See you later. Lisa walks to the phone and dials a number. Hi, Mom. How are you doing? I'm fine. What's happening with you? <laughs> What's wrong? Tell me. I'm not feeling good today. Why not? I don't think I want to get married. Why not? With the sigh. I don't love him anymore. Why not? Tell me why. He is so boring. You've known him for over five years. You are engaged. You said you love him. You should reconsider. He supports you and provides for you. And you can't support yourself. He is a good guy and he loves you very much. His income is very secure. <laughs> he told me that he wants to buy you a home. That's why he's so boring. 
<laughs> what are you gonna do? Oh, I don't know. I don't mind living with him. You can't, you, you can't do that. Did you tell Johnny about it? No, I don't know what to do. He is a very nice person, you know. He's getting a promotion soon. He bought you a car, a ring, clothes, and whatever you want. And now you want to dump him? It's not right. I, I always thought of him as my son-in-law. You should marry him. He would be good for you. Oh, I guess you are right about that, Ma. Of course I'm right, my dear. <laughs> I know about men. <laughs> I was not born yesterday. I am glad you listened to your mother. Nobody else listens to me. I work so hard and nobody appreciates it. I try to tell them what they should do, but they don't listen. Yeah, I guess I'll try it. See you later, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, take care of yourself, Lisa. Bye. Bye, Mom. Lisa hangs up and dials another number while she is munching a bagel. <laughs> hi, baby. How you doing? Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm very busy. How you doing? <laughs> talking to my mother and she gave me a big lecture about Johnny. We'll talk about it later. I'm very busy. <laughs> we'll talk right now. Whenever you say we'll talk about it later, we never do. I can't wait till later. We have to talk right now. You owe me one anyway. Okay. What do you want to talk about? She is a fucking bitch. <laughs> she wants to control my life. I will not put up with that. I will do whatever I want, and that's it. What do you think I should do? I need your advice. <laughs> Why do you ask me? You've been very happy with Johnny. What do you want me to say? You should enjoy life. What's the problem? Maybe you're right. Can I see you for coffee tomorrow? Okay, about 12 noon. <laughs> Lisa finishes her bagel and changes her clothes. Scene two. Lisa is sitting at the table doing her nails. She is wearing tight jeans, a low cut t-shirt, and red shoes, which match her nail polish. We hear the sound of the front door being unlocked. Johnny comes in carrying flowers. Hi, babe. This is for you. Oh, thanks. Did you get that promotion, honey? She takes flowers to the kitchen, unwraps them, and puts them in a vase. Johnny lies down on the couch. She brings the flowers to the room and places them on the coffee table. You didn't get it, did you? The son of a bitch told me that I will get it within three months. It's not right. I saved them bundles. They are crazy. I don't believe I will ever get it. They tricked me. They didn't keep their promise. They betrayed me. I don't care anymore. Lisa is sitting in the chair next to the couch. Did you tell them how much you saved them? Of course I did. What do you think? They already put my ideas into practice and already the bank saved money. They're using me and I'm the fool. I still love you. You're the only one who does. You still have friends. I mean, I didn't get any calls today. You're right. This computer business is too competitive. I called a dozen of my old clients and they don't need me. Do you want me to order a pizza or something? Whatever, I don't care. What kind of topping do you want? I don't care. Are you all right? What is the matter? It's just a lousy promotion. She orders pizza. <laughs> I'll fix a cup of chocolate. That will make you feel better. <laughs> she goes to the kitchen and comes back with the chocolate and sets it on the coffee table. He sits up. Thank you. She gives him the chocolate and sits next to him. I need a drink. I don't drink, you know. She goes to the cabinet, pours two drinks and carries them back to Johnny and pours his drink into his cup of chocolate. She takes a sip of her drink. It's good for you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I can't drink. You must be crazy. 
If you love me, you will drink this, my darling. <laughs> the pizza man rings the bell. Lisa pays him and brings the pizza to the room. They are eating the pizza. You are not drinking your cognac, dear. It will taste good with pizza. <laughs> he takes a small sip and eats pizza. You're right, it's good. I know I am right. Don't worry about those fuckers. You are a good man. Drink and have some fun. Fade out and fade into the inside shot of the window with darkness outside. They're drinking. The bottle is empty. <laughs> you have nice legs. <laughs> he is mumbling. mumbling. <laughs> Lisa is tapping his shoulder. You have nice packs. They stumble to the bed and fall into each other's arms laughing. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm wasted, I love you, darling. You've never been wasted. Make love to me, Johnny. Johnny doesn't respond. Come on. You owe me one. Okay, okay. He is falling asleep. Lisa turns the light off and crawls in beside him and falls asleep. Scene three. It's morning. They are in the bed, still dressed. We see the clock, which reads 9.30 a.m. Johnny rolls over towards the clock and suddenly sits up. Oh my god, 9.30 already, I'll be late. Johnny stands up and sits back down, holding his head. Then he stands up and walks to the bathroom. He comes out of the bathroom in his underwear and gets dressed. What? Lisa. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Lisa sits up slowly. What time is it? I'm late for work. Do you want some coffee? I don't have time. See you later. Johnny kisses Lisa on the cheek and goes out the door. She gets up and goes to the kitchen and fixes a cup of coffee. She comes back to the room and dials a number on the phone. Hey, Dashbury Clinic, may I help you? Hello, Peter. This is Lisa. How are you? I'm fine. What's happening? I'm planning to have a surprise birthday party for Johnny. Can you invite all his friends? When is it? Next week, Friday night at 6. Tell everyone that it's a surprise. He will be working late until 6, and he will be there at 6.15. <laughs> Okay, I'll call everybody. <laughs> Is there anything you want me to bring? I'll take care of everything, Peter. Thanks. Okay, uh, how, how are you doing? I'm fine. I didn't get any clients yesterday. Maybe today will be your lucky day. She laughs. laughs. I hope so. Maybe it will. Okay, then um, I will let you know who's coming. Okay, see you later. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> she hangs up and dials another number and opens a bottle of nail polish and starts polishing her toenails red to match her fingernails. Hello. Hello, Mom. How are you? Not so good. How are you? I'm organizing a party for Johnny's birthday. Can you come? When is it? Next Friday at 6. It's a surprise. Bring a friend if you want to. Sure, I can come. But I don't know if I'll bring any... who I'll bring. All men are assholes. <laughs> you know what happened? This son of a bitch, Harold, want, wants me to give him a share of the house. This house belongs to me, and he doesn't have any rights. I'm not giving him a penny. This son of a bitch asshole. <laughs> who does he think he is? I'll have nothing to do with him. But he's your brother. <laughs> Why don't you want to have anything to do with him? He always bugs me about my house. He has plenty of properties. It's been 15 years since we agreed that the house is mine. Since the value of the house has gone up, he's seeing dollar signs. <laughs> Everything is going wrong at once. Nobody wants to help me, and I'm dying. You're not dying, Mom. 
I got the results of the tests, and I definitely have breast cancer. <laughs> I have to go in for chemotherapy. Everything will be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> They're curing a lot of people every day. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be all right. I heard that Edward is talking about me. He is a hateful man. <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> I'm glad I divorced him. <laughs> Don't worry, Mom. You just concentrate on getting well. Everything will be just fine. At least you have a good man. You're wrong, Mother. <laughs> He's not what you think. He didn't get his promotion. And he got drunk last night and hit me. He doesn't drink. What are you talking about? Well, he did last night. I don't love him anymore. Listen to your mother. Johnny is your financial security. You shouldn't ignore this. Yeah, all right, Mom. See you later, Mom. <laughs> you don't want to talk to me, right? I'm dying. That's why nobody loves me anymore. Um, I just talked to my client and I have to get ready to meet him. I'll call you later. See you, Mom. Okay, see you later, my dear. Scene four. Lisa hangs up the phone and cleans up the room, dressing herself in a sexy outfit to get ready for Mark. She puts on jeweled sandals to show off her toenails. <laughs> The doorbell rings and she opens the door. Hi, how you doing? Come in. I'm fine. You want a cup of coffee? Okay. <laughs> Six periods? <laughs> Have a seat. Lisa goes to the kitchen. Mark sits down and picks up a magazine. Lisa comes back with two cups of coffee and places them on the table. Thank you, you look very nice today. Oh, for periods. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, for periods again. <laughs> she goes to the stereo and puts on a CD, classical music, and lights the candle, which, candles which are on the table in a seductive voice. It's hot in here today, my dear boy. <laughs> She removes her t-shirt and reveals a tight dress with bare shoulders. The candles, the music, and a sexy dress. What's going on here? She moves closer to Mark and slightly touches him and kisses him on the cheek. I like you very much, lover boy. What are you doing this for? <laughs> You don't like me? I'm your girl. Johnny is my best friend. You're gonna get married next month. Forget about Johnny. This is between you and me. He starts to get up. I don't think so. I'm leaving now. Don't leave! I need you! I love you! Everything is going wrong! I don't want to get married and I don't love Johnny anymore! I dream about you. Make love to me. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> don't worry. Everything's gonna be okay. He grabs her wrists and pulls her arms away from him. She breaks free from his grip and grabs his shirt, pulling it up from his pants and unbuckles his belt. At the same time, she kisses him passionately. He kisses her back. She pulls him to the bed and they lie down together. After they finish making love, <laughs> Mark stands up and puts on his clothes in a hurry the same time he is talking. Why did you do this to me? <laughs> Why? 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 He is yelling. I can't believe I let you do this to me. Oh God. Johnny is my best friend. Didn't you 
like it? Didn't you enjoy it? That's not the point. <laughs> Did you realize what we have done? I love you, Mark. I love you very much. I was always attracted to you. You are very beautiful. But listen to me, Lisa. We can't do this anymore. I can't hurt Johnny. Sarcastically. Yeah, I know. He is your best friend. I'm glad you understand the situation. <laughs> This would be our secret. Did you like it? Nodding his head. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. He is kissing Lisa on the cheek. See you later, I have to go now. <laughs> okay, see you later. She holds onto his arm as he goes out the door. Scene five. Smiling, she very quickly straightens the bed. Then she washes the coffee cups, puts the candles away, and changes to t-shirts and jeans. She puts pasta in the oven and says... <laughs> and settles in the chair with a magazine. Shortly, there is the sound of a key in the door. Johnny enters the apartment with one red rose. Hi, how are you? <laughs> he gives Lisa the rose and takes his blazer off and sits down on the couch. She's smiling and putting the rose to her nose. <laughs> Thank you. I'm doing great. You are so charming. You always give me flowers. You're so unique. Let me kiss you. <laughs> she gets up and kisses Johnny on the cheek. What's cooking? <laughs> Pasta, your favorite dish, my sweet pie. <laughs> You're awfully happy today. What's up? Did you get a client? I called dozens of clients, but no one needs my service. It's very tough. Do you feel like eating now? Oh, I'm starving. <laughs> what else did you do today? You are in a very good mood. Let me fix the pasta. I'll take a shower. Johnny disappears into the bathroom. Lisa waits until the water is running and dials a number on the phone. Hi, Mark. I miss you. I just saw you. <laughs> Are you crazy? Sorry, my darling. I just wanted to hear your sexy voice. I can tell you something else. I like how you put our sexy hands around my body. <laughs> you excite me so, and I love you. Is Johnny there? Yeah, he's in the shower, but I like you better. I don't understand you. Why do you do this? Because I love you. Sarcastically. You don't care, do you? Yes, I do care, but we agree it's over between us. I understand. I'm with you. It's our secret. I still have feelings for you, but I guess you don't care. Yep, I do care. Don't drive yourself crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the water stops running. I have to go now. See you later, my darling. Don't call me that. Okay, bye! <laughs> bye. Johnny comes down out of the bathroom with a towel around his middle and goes to the closet. <laughs> Who are you talking to? My mother. Is she okay? Oh, she tested for breast cancer and now she's talking about dying. <laughs> it's no big deal these days, is it? <laughs> no, I'm not worried. <laughs> She is preparing dinner and puts everything on the table. Dinner is ready. They sit down to eat. What happened last night? I don't remember anything. Did we make love? <laughs> you don't remember? You poor little thing. You don't remember when you hit me? Johnny is yelling. Hit you? I never would do that. Even if I was drunk, you must be kidding. It's not true, is it? Do you have a bruise? <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, it's true. They are eating. I will never drink again. I feel sick. I can't eat anymore. He is pushing his plate away. I'm strong. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I need some money. I, 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 I need to buy a new dress. How much do you want? Around $300. <laughs> Why so much? He pulls out his wallet and hands her three $100 bills. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny. She kisses him on his cheek. You are always so generous with me. I have to be. We will be married soon. You love me, don't you? <laughs> of course I do. Lisa gets up, clears the table, and changes her clothes. I'm going to the roof to straighten out my head. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Act two, scene six. Johnny opens the door to the roof access. Mark is sitting there. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> What's new with you? Johnny picks up a football from the floor and tosses it in the air. Not much. I'm sitting here, uh, and I'm thinking about life. I wonder if girls like to cheat like guys do. What makes you say that? Mark stands up and Johnny tosses the ball to him. Well, I'm just thinking, you know? They continue to toss the ball while they are talking. I don't have to worry about that because Lisa is loyal to me. You never know. People are very strange these days. <laughs> I used to know a girl who had a dozen guys. One of them found out about it, beat her up, and she ended up in a hospital. <laughs> what a story. <laughs> Say that again. I'm so lucky. I have you as my best friend, and I love Lisa so much. You are very lucky. Pause. You should get a girl, Mark. Yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe I have one. I don't know yet. <laughs> what happened to this girl? Remember Betty? That's her name, right? I don't see her anymore. Besides, she just wasn't good, any good in bed. She was beautiful, but we had too many arguments. That's too bad. My Lisa's great when I can get it. I can't, I can't figure women out. Sometimes they're too smart, sometimes dumb, and sometimes they're evil and seductive. Seems to me that you're an expert on this. Laughing bitterly. No, I'm definitely not an expert. What's bothering you, Mark? Mark stands up and shouts. Nothing, forget it. You have some secret, Mark? Why don't you tell me? We are like brothers. We shouldn't have secrets. No, I'll talk to you later. Mark goes through the door. Johnny lies down on the bench and looks at the sky, still tossing the ball. <laughs> Scene seven. Lisa enters the room with department store shopping bags and her friend Michelle. They are talking and laughing. <laughs> Would you like something to drink? She puts her shopping bag on the couch and goes to the kitchen. Michelle follows her. I'd love to. How's Johnny? Mm, not so good. He didn't get his promotion. I'm sorry to hear that. Was he disappointed? Quite a bit. He got drunk last night and hit me. Now he's on the roof getting his head straightened out. He hit you? How did this happen? He got drunk and he didn't know what he was doing. They have prepared drinks and go into the room to sit down. You poor thing. Are you okay? Well, I don't want to marry him anymore. What? I thought it was all planned. How is he in bed? <laughs> <laughs> he is okay, but I found somebody else. What? And you're planning a birthday party for Johnny? Why not? He doesn't know anything about it. She giggles. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Look, this is not right. You're living with a one guy and doing sex with another. <laughs> I'm doing what I want to do. Does this new guy know Johnny? He is his best friend and lives in the building. Michelle, Michelle turns away and thinks for a moment. I don't believe you're telling me this. She thinks a little while more. It's Mark, isn't it? You're not thinking about Johnny or Mark. 
You're just thinking about yourself, Lisa. You can't go on this way. Somebody's going to get hurt. You have to be honest with Johnny. You can't go on like this. I can't do that. What will it do to Johnny? He would be devastated and never recover. Oh, so you are saying you are thinking about him and not yourself. <laughs> well, I really don't know what to do. I really love Mark. He makes me so happy, and I don't have any more feelings for Johnny. I just talked to Johnny a few days ago, and he is excited about the wedding. He loves you very much. I know all of that. <laughs> Well, you've got to tell him as soon as possible. This is not right. You are hurting yourself and everybody around you. You're laying a guilt trip on me. I'm very happy. I'm not hurt. Lisa, you don't feel guilty at all? No, I don't. I'm happy. You're headed for trouble. If you don't tell him, something awful will happen. I don't get this. Don't tell anybody. This is my business and nobody else's. Do you understand that? Don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. Johnny is opening the front door. Hello, Michelle, I heard you. What secret? It's between us women. Hello, Johnny. Sits down close to Lisa and puts his hand on her knee. Did you get your dress? Excuse me, I have to go. See you later, guys. She stands up and walks toward the door. Remember what I told you, Lisa. She goes out the door. Oh, that's you. Johnny. Uh. <laughs> What's she talking about? It's women talk. Didn't you know that? I still don't believe I hid you. You shouldn't have any secrets from me. I'm your future husband. Lisa is smiling. Are you sure about that? Maybe I'll change your mind. Don't talk like that. What do you mean? What do you think? Women change their minds all the time, you know? <laughs> You're just kidding, aren't you? I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to wash up and go to bed. How dare you talk to me like that? You should tell me everything. What is it you don't want to talk about? I can't talk now. Why, Lisa? Why, Lisa? Why don't you talk to me? Come on, Lisa! 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 Talk to me, please! Without you, I would be nothing. You are my life, my everything. I could not go on without you. You're scaring me. You are lying. I never hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Greg. You are taking me apart, Lisa. <laughs> One more time, everyone now. You are taking it apart, Lisa! Why are you so hysterical? He takes her by the shoulders and shakes her. Do you understand life? Do you understand life? Do you? Don't worry about it. Everything will be all right. She is kissing Johnny on the cheek and goes into the bathroom. You drive me crazy. He is sitting on a chair and thinking. His face looks very worried. She comes out of the bathroom with her nightgown on and goes to bed. Good night, Johnny. He undresses and slides into bed beside Lisa. Don't worry. I still love you. Good night. <laughs> Scene 8. Next day, Lisa dials a phone number. She is eating and drinking a soft drink. Hi, Mom. How are you doing? Who is this? <laughs> she is pressing buttons on the answering machine and shouting. Can, can you hear me now? There's something wrong with the answering machine. I can hear you now. Is this Lisa? Yes, it's me, Mom. How are you doing? Oh, I'm okay, I guess. You sound awful. What's wrong with you? This son of a bitch husband of yours, 
did not want to help me. I called him because Shirley needs a loan and this asshole did not want to do me a favor. <laughs> Shirley wants to buy a house with her alimony and all he can say is, it's an awkward situation. What a bastard. <laughs> he is not my husband. He is part of our family. Mother, I don't love him. I don't like him. And I had sex with someone else. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't be serious. You have to understand my feelings, Mom. Who is this guy? I'll talk to you later about this. Uh, why did you call me anyway? Are you coming to the party? <laughs> sure. This asshole will not control my life. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Mom. Bye. Lisa pulls her purse out of the closet and goes out the door. After a short pause, Johnny enters the room. He sees the answering machine is blinking and presses the button. While he listens to the conversation between Lisa and Claudette, he removes his tie and blazer. Suddenly, he sits on the couch with a worried look on his face. How can they say this about me? I don't believe it! He is putting his face in his hands. I'll show them. I'll record everything! <laughs> he gets up and goes to the closet. He takes out a recording device, installs it, and hides it in a drawer. <laughs> Scene 9. The doorbell rings. He is annoyed. Who is it? Peter. It's Peter. Open up. <laughs> Johnny presses the delete button on the answering machine and then opens the front door, still looking worried. Oh, hi, Peter. How are you doing? Come in. How are you doing? You, you don't look so good. Peter sits down on the couch. I'm just fine, Peter. What can I get you? Can I have some water? Sure! Johnny comes back with two bottles of water and glasses of ice. He puts them on the coffee table. He sits down and pours water into a glass. I don't understand women, do you? What's the problem? They never say what they mean, and they always play games. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm having some serious problems with Lisa. I don't know if she's being faithful to me. In fact, I know she isn't. How do you know? I overheard a conversation. I'm completely shocked. I don't know what to do. What should I do, Peter? I'm shocked too. I had no idea. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I don't know what to say. I can't believe it. But you are a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> don't you have some advice? Well, it's a very difficult situation. I'm your friend and I, I don't want to come between you and Lisa. However, if you want to, you could confront her. I don't want to confront her. I want to give her a second chance. After all, she is my future wife. You know what they say, love is blind. <laughs> the doorbell rings. Johnny doesn't move. After a moment, Peter says, 12 periods. You have a lot of, you have a lot of faith in Lisa. Life can be tough and unexpected things can happen. You have to face it when it comes. Did you just hear the doorbell ring? <laughs> yeah, I did. He gets up and opens the door. Hi, Johnny. Is Peter here yet? Yeah, come in, Mark. Hi, Mark. We were just talking about women. Mark sits beside Peter. Mark, do you want something to drink? Yeah, I'll take some water. Johnny goes to the kitchen and comes back with another bottle and a glass. <laughs> I know what you mean about women, Peter. I have a girl, but she's married. She's very attractive and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> How come you didn't tell me about this, Mark? Is it anyone I know? You don't know her. I'd like to meet her. I don't think that's possible. It's an awkward situation. In a teasing voice. Is she too old? Or are you afraid I'll take her away from you, huh? I don't think so. I have my own problems. Tell us about your problems, Johnny. You're always playing the psychologist with us, people. <laughs> I'm just really concerned. I mean, you don't look so good. Lisa is teasing me about whether we'll get married or not. And we haven't made love for a while. I'm really worried. You guys know how I feel about her, right? 
Lisa is very attractive. You never, <laughs> you never know. You should, you should talk to her about your feelings and, and not hide them. You've been with her so long. Everything is workable if you just talk about it. Not always. If somebody calls you asshole. Wait, who called you that? Lisa's mother. How did you find out? I heard about it. People are people. Some, sometimes we don't see our own faults. I'm thinking of moving from this place to a bigger one. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm making some good money lately. Why don't you just... <laughs> Why don't you just tell the truth? You're doing this for your girl, aren't you? You're right, Peter. Is she going to get a divorce, Mark? You guys are too much. Oh, by the way, are you running Beta Breakers this year? Sure I will. Last year was cool. I'm not doing it this year. Chicken? You're a chicken? Just a little chicken? Who are you calling a chicken? I'm not a chicken. There's just too many weirdos. I don't like all the weirdos. It doesn't bother me. Tomorrow? Did you see the one with the big tits? Uh, no, but how about the one in a bridal gown with the sign? <laughs> yeah, can you marry me? I was thinking of taking her up on it. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. I, I never ate so much. I loved the barbecue chicken and rice. Look. I rest my case. You guys are weird too. Let's play poker. No, I'm expecting Lisa any minute. Hey, who's the king of the house? You should establish your position before you get married. By the way, how did you meet Lisa? You never told us. Oh yeah, it's an interesting story. When I came to San Francisco on the Greyhound with two suitcases, I didn't know anybody. I hit the YMCA with a $2,000 check I couldn't cash. Why not? Because it was out of state bank. Anyway, <laughs> I did not have any family anywhere. I met Lisa working as busboy in a hotel. She was drinking her coffee and she was beautiful. And I said hi to her. That's how we met. <laughs> What's the interesting part? <laughs> well, on our first date, she had to buy me dinner. What? No tips from your job? Whatever. Do you guys want to eat something? Lisa opens the front door. Hi guys, how are you doing? Mark stands up. I gotta go. See you later, guys. <laughs> I didn't mean to chase you off. Stick around for a while. I can't. I have to work early tomorrow. See you later. Lisa follows Mark to the door. You got any new clients? No. Nope. See you later. Bye. <laughs> he goes quickly out the door. Lisa comes back and sits on the couch with Peter. Oh, where have you been? Oh, I was shopping. Again? <laughs> Did you get anything? No, I was just looking. Do you have your uh, wedding gown yet? Oh no, plenty of time. <laughs> what do you mean plenty of time? It's only in a month. It will be all right. June is a very busy month for weddings. What are you worried about? Everything's okay. <laughs> Peter looks at Johnny intensely. Why aren't you so excited? What's the problem? There isn't any problem. Why are you asking? Are you having second thoughts? Don't rub it in, Peter. <laughs> you are too much. <laughs> Would you like something to eat? Uh, no thanks, I better go now. Do you have an appointment with a patient? As a matter of fact, I do at four o'clock. <laughs> I have to go right now. <laughs> Peter gets up and goes to the front door. See you later, guys. I'm glad you stopped by, Peter. Take care of yourself. See you later, Peter. Lisa gets up and goes to the kitchen to fix something to eat. Johnny follows her. Did you hear what Peter said? Does he know something I don't? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about you and me. I'm talking about the wedding. I want to know where you stand. Something isn't right. What is it? Do you still love me? Of course I still love you. Why do I get the idea that you don't? 
Are you having an affair with someone else? <laughs> Whatever gives you that idea? I don't know. You heard what Peter said. He has a sixth sense about things like this. He is a psychologist, you know. <laughs> he knows about people, Lisa. Maybe he doesn't. Did you have an affair with someone? I want to know. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Why haven't we made love in a while? Why don't we kiss anymore? You don't do anything except stay home all day or shop. You want me to kiss you? She goes to Johnny and kisses him passionately. Johnny pushes her away, screaming and yelling. It's not that. I feel that I'm losing you and you don't want me. Our lives are dissolving around us and we don't have anything to grab. Why? 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 Lisa! 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 Why? It's just that I'm pregnant. <laughs> what? You are? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, baby, this is wonderful news. Johnny is reaching out his arms to hug her. Uh, let's go to bed. Johnny hugs her looking very worried. Fade out while they are hugging. <laughs> Act three, scene 10. Peter comes out of the door to see the roof and finds Mark sitting on the bench looking depressed. Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> hi, Peter. Pause. It's a good place to think, huh? Mark pulls a joint out of his pocket. <laughs> and he likes it. What's that? You want some? <laughs> no, man. You know I don't smoke that stuff. You look depressed. I got this sick feeling in my stomach. I did something awful and I can't forgive myself. Why don't you tell me about it? Well, I feel like running. I'm killing myself. <laughs> or something crazy like that. Why are you smoking this crap? No, no wonder you can't think straight. That stuff will mess up your brain. Anyway, it's none of your business. Why are you so nosy? You think you know everything. You don't know shit. Just a minute. Just a minute. Who do you think you are? You're, you're acting like a kid. Grow up. He throws the joint to the floor and smashes it out with his shoe. He is yelling. Who are you calling a kid? Fuck you. <laughs> Peter grabs him by the arm. They stand up together. Cool it, Mark. I'm just trying to help you. I, I know you're having an affair with Lisa. Am I wrong? He jerks his arm away from Peter's grip and hits him in the face with his fist and knocks him down. <laughs> Peter is unconscious. <laughs> Mark stares at him. Wake up, man, wake up! He looks around and sees a bucket of water, grabs it, and pours it on Peter's face. What are you doing? Are you crazy? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. You're my best friend. <laughs> You okay? Yeah, don't worry about it. Let's talk about your problem. <laughs> Peter takes his shirt off and wipes his face with it. Mark sits next to Peter. Are you sure you're okay? Pause. Why do you want to know my secret? Well, you're right, it's Lisa. I don't know what to do. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so depressed. I think I'll kill myself. She's Johnny's my best friend. <laughs> She's so manipulative. Well, how did this happen? If Johnny fi finds out, that will be the end of, our f of your friendship. What were you thinking? Look, life is very complex, but you just have to face it. You have to be responsible. My advice to you is that you should stop thinking about her and never do sex with her. <laughs> find, find another girl, that's my advice. Lisa is a sociopath. She only cares about herself, and she is incapable of loving anyone. Whatever, Peter. Let's go. <laughs> they go out the door. Scene 11. Johnny is in the kitchen dressing for work, eating breakfast, and Lisa is still asleep. He finishes his breakfast. He goes over to the answering machine and presses a few buttons. He kisses Lisa on the cheek. Bye, Lisa. 
Johnny goes out the door. Lisa wakes up, goes to the kitchen, and fixes herself a cup of coffee. She goes to the phone and dials a number. Hello, Mom. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> I'm fixing the apartment for the party, but I'm not into it. Why not? Oh, I just don't want to get married. I'm in love with Mark. Do you understand that? It's not right, Lisa. You should still keep Johnny, because he's very independent, and you ain't. <laughs> Would be a shame to give up all that. But I'm not happy. This fool thinks that I will marry him next month. It will not happen. You expect to be happy. I haven't been happy since I got married the first time. I didn't even want to marry your dad either. And I was miserable since then. You never told me that. It's true. Men are all assholes. <laughs> You have to use them and abuse them. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. I know Johnny is okay, actually. I have him wrapped around my little finger. Well, then you should be happy. But I'm not. I don't love him. Don't throw your life away just because you don't love him. That's ridiculous. You've got to grow up, and you should listen to me. Okay, Mom, see you at the party. <laughs> Bye. This is sweeping the floor. The buzzer rings, and she answers. Who is it? Delivery man. It's me, honey. <laughs> Come on up. Mark enters, carrying several takeout boxes. Hi, honey. Put them in the kitchen. <laughs> Mark goes to the kitchen. How's it going? Are you ready? How do you mean that? I'm always ready for you. <laughs> I mean for the party, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa hugs him and whispers into his ear. I'm all ready. Yeah. <laughs> we have plenty of time. <laughs> She pulls her t-shirt over her head, revealing bare breasts. <laughs> Come here. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Come here. Mark smiles, looking at her breasts, and approaches her. You are very beautiful. <laughs> Lisa grabs Mark's hands and they kiss passionately. Mark removes his shirt and unzips his pants. Suddenly, the buzzer rings. Lisa and Mark are still kissing and undressing when the buzzer rings again. They break apart and hurriedly dress. Are you ready? I have to open the door. Oh, wait. Oh, Mark, you have to say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle, come on up. Lisa kisses Mark. The doorbell rings. Lisa opens it, and Michelle comes in, carrying a grocery sack. <laughs> How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. I brought the stuff. I knew I could count on you. Hi, Mark. X, Y, Z. What are you talking about? Examine your zipper. Mark hurriedly zips up. You guys are too much. <laughs> what can I do to help you? I have to go now. Mark, Mark goes to the door. What was he doing here? Oh, he brought some takeout. What about his zipper? Michelle and Lisa laugh hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> Leave him alone. He's a nice guy. <laughs> no, I mean, did something happen? He tried to rape me, but... <laughs> but I didn't let him. <laughs> did, did you tell Johnny yet? No, they are...
are good friends. <laughs> I know. Tricky, tricky. <sighs> you know, I really love Johnny at first. Really? I thought you love him now. Well, until now, I did think I still love him. Everything has changed. I need more from life than Johnny can give me. Suddenly, my eyes are wide open, and I see the light. I want it all! <laughs> Do you think you can get it all for Mark? I want to play the field. If he doesn't give me what I want, somebody else will. I think I don't know you anymore. Michelle is <laughs> laughing. You're being manipulative, Lisa. <laughs> so what? You can learn from me. Lisa is laughing, Paul. <laughs> you have to take as much as you can get. You have to live, 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 my friend. Don't worry. I have everything covered. Tell me more. Maybe I can understand your point of view. I don't want to talk about it. Let put this stuff in bowls. <laughs> We only have an hour before people will be coming. Lisa and Michelle start working on party preparation while they are talking. I want to know. It's important to me. You're my best friend. This really upsets me. I don't know what the big mystery is. Doesn't everybody look out for number one? Don't I deserve the best? I can't do that. <laughs> you are too much for me, Lisa. You are not such an angel yourself. Well, we're not talking about me. Michelle throws cherry tomato at Lisa. <laughs> Lisa throws a prawn at Michelle. <laughs> Stop it! They'll be here any minute. Are you trying to ruin my party? <laughs> I'm with you. Let's talk later. Looks to me like we're ready. Scene 12. Lisa is sitting in the chair in her party dress, reading a magazine. Johnny's friends are in the kitchen talking and laughing. It sounds like a party. You guys quiet down in there. I can hear him, I can hear him coming. <laughs> the talking and laughing gradually subsides. There is the sound of a key in the door. The door opens and Johnny enters, very angry. Hi, honey. Happy birthday! The angry look fades from Johnny's face. Thank you. Just then, the kitchen door opens and the crowd of people comes out. Happy birthday, seven periods. Johnny smiles and says to Lisa, I'll talk to you later. Several people shake Johnny's hand. The guys slap him on the back and girls kiss him on the cheek. <laughs> and some of them give him presents. He puts them on the coffee table. Johnny pretends to be happy but keeps glancing at Lisa. For a while there's a general conversation and laughter. Hey everybody, let's go to the roof and get some fresh air. Lisa opens the door and people go out in groups of two and three. <laughs> When Mark starts to go through the door, Lisa puts her hand on his arm and says, Let me show you something. Mark smiles. What do you want to show me? It's a surprise. She pulls him by his hand, pushes him to the bed, and kisses him suddenly. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Everybody's here. No, they're not. They're all gone to the roof. <laughs> you little devil. <laughs> you planned this all along. Suddenly, the door opens and Peter comes in while Mark and Lisa are kissing. What's going on here? Lisa and Mark separate immediately, surprised. <clears throat> Why are you doing this? I don't believe it! You don't understand anything. Leave your stupid comments in your pocket. <laughs> Mark goes out the door. Peter turns to Lisa. Do you understand what you were doing? You were going to destroy Johnny. He is very sensitive. I don't care. I'm in love with Mark. How can you do this? You make me sick. The door opens and Johnny comes in with Michelle. Thank you, honey. This is a beautiful party. You invited all my friends. Good thinking. Every 
everybody grab something to drink. Johnny, you bring the plastic cups and I'll bring the JD. We are going back up to the roof. <laughs> Act four, scene 13. Everyone is on the roof talking and laughing and looking at the view from all sides. <laughs> the guys are tossing the football. Yes. <laughs> Have you thought about that loan we were talking about? Mother, let's talk about that later. It's Johnny's birthday party. Okay. Johnny, I will call you later about this. I already told you the answer is no. <laughs> I don't understand why. Never mind if it is your birthday. It's not up to me. The decision was already made. She is qualified to get this loan. I've known her for years. She always pays her bills on time. The fact is, well, I can't tell you what happened because of client privilege. However, there was something wrong with the paperwork. <laughs> she steps closer to Johnny. You can tell me. Shirley is my best friend. <laughs> We don't have any secrets from each other. I'm sorry, I can't. It's too late. She says to Lisa, Why don't you talk to this husband of yours? Mother, stop it. This is Johnny's party. We will talk about it later. Do you want a drink? No, I'm so depressed. <laughs> and it's all his fault. Let's have a toast for Johnny! Everybody sings the song, Happy Birthday to You. <laughs> and lifts their glasses. Okay, let's go downstairs for the cake. People go through the door by twos and threes. <laughs> Act 5, scene 14. Lisa comes through the door of the room and goes into the kitchen. The others follow. After a while, people start coming out of the kitchen carrying pieces of cake and plates and glasses of drinks. <laughs> Johnny comes to the, the room and puts his arm around Lisa's shoulders. Hey everybody, I have an announcement to make. He waits for everybody to be quiet. We're expecting. Oh, 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 congratulations. <laughs> people are shouting and yelling at Lisa. <laughs> People are shouting and yelling Lisa's and Johnny's names. There's another round of shaking Johnny's hand and kissing Lisa on the cheek. However, Peter and Michelle stand together, looking very worried. Then Michelle takes Lisa by her hand and leads her to unoccupied corner, and Peter joins them. Lisa, you have to be honest with Johnny. I agree with that. Michelle talks to Peter. Do you, do you know what's going on? Peter nods his head. Um, hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tell him. I just don't want to spoil his birthday. When is the baby due? There is no baby. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, I just told him that to make it interesting. Anyway, we'll probably have a baby eventually. You won't say anything to Johnny, will you? This is getting worse and worse. I feel like I'm sitting on an atomic bomb waiting for it to go off. Me too. There is no good solution here. Don't worry about it. It will turn out all right. You guys worry too much about me. We're not worried about you. We're worried about Johnny. You don't understand the psychological impact of what you're doing. You're hurting yourself. And you're hurting Johnny and our friendship. I'm not responsible for Johnny anymore. I'm through with that. I'm changing. I have the right, don't I? It happens every day. People are always changing. I have to think about my future. What's it to you? This is gonna pull all of us down. It's gonna shake up our group of friends. It will destroy our friendship, Lisa. I don't think Mark loves you. I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> You're going to have to face it. I, for one, will have a hard time forgiving you. Are you betraying me now? 
I don't understand you. Mark approaches this group and he is tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> Whose baby is it, Lisa? Is it mine? She is looking very angry. Of course not! Mark steps closer to Lisa and puts his hand on her arm. How can you be sure, anyway? Are you sure it's not mine? She is looking very angry. Don't ask me any questions. Mark holds Lisa's arm very tightly. Who the hell do you think you are? Lisa slaps him with her other hand on the face. Shut up! Johnny sees what's happening and approaches Mark, Peter, and Michelle. What's going on here? You really don't know, do you? He hurt my arm. She is whining. Please. I know more than you think I do, Mark. You don't know shit. Johnny is <laughs> Johnny's very angry. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? I want you to just disappear, you little twerp. Johnny punches Mark in the shoulder. You leave Lisa alone, prick. Mark hits Johnny in the face. Johnny returns the blow. They end up on the floor wrestling and hitting each other. Lisa screams to ah! Oh, I thought I was supposed to scream. Stop! 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 Peter! Michelle! Help! Help! Lisa, Peter, and Michelle try to pull them apart. Several other guys help lift them to the table. <laughs> <laughs> Peter grabs a bucket of water and ice and, <laughs> and pours it on Johnny and Mark. The guys who are holding Mark and Johnny also get wet. <laughs> and they start laughing and shouting at Peter. Hey, knock it off. What are you doing? Are you crazy? All right, the fight's over, folks. Everything is fine. Johnny sticks out his hand to shake Mark's hand. Sorry about that, Mark. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> Lisa, can we have a big mop here? <laughs> Lisa goes to the kitchen to get a mop. People start throwing ice at each other and laughing. The party goes on with people talking, drinking, and eating. You guys, knock it off. You're just making more work for me. Johnny goes to the bathroom and comes out with stack of towels. Towels, anyone? <laughs> Several guys take towels and wipe their faces and hair and others shout. Yeah, I'll take one. Give me a couple. Need a service. Thank goodness. <laughs> Johnny puts on a heavy metal music. <laughs> And the mood changes to fast dancing. <laughs> After a while, Lisa approaches Mark to dance. They are holding hands while dancing, starting sta staring into each other's eyes with seductive expressions, off and on touching each other's shoulders, hips, and knees. <laughs> Soon, Johnny notices and approaches them. What are you doing? None of your business. You are my future wife. What the heck are you doing? Leave her alone. She doesn't want to talk to you. Very angrily. <laughs> Since when do you give me orders? Since Lisa changed her mind about you. Wake up, man. What planet are you on? I think you should leave right now. Don't spoil it. We're just having fun. Mark pokes Johnny slightly in his shoulder. Don't worry about it, man. Everything's going to be all right. Don't touch me, you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> Leave my girl alone. Johnny grabs Mark around his neck and pushes him back to the wall. Mark forces his hands between Johnny's arms and breaks Johnny's grip. Grabs one of Johnny's arms and twists it behind Johnny's back. Johnny leans forward and breaks Mark's grip and whirls around and punches him in the side of the head. <laughs> At the same time, Lisa tries to get between them, screaming. Children, both of you are ruining the party. Several guys grab Mark and Johnny and pull them away from each other and hold them. At the same time, Mark and Johnny and the other guys are shouting at each other. Michelle and a few girls talk to Lisa to calm her down. 
Everybody is talking at once. You son of a bitch, dirty scum. <laughs> if you'd keep your girl satisfied, she would not come to me. Get out! If I ever see you again, I'll kill you! I'll break every bone in your body, you son of a bitch asshole! <laughs> the other guys are forcing Mark towards the door and shouting. What are you doing? Are you nuts? You're supposed to be best friends. Break it up, it's over. Cool it, you guys. Mark, go over and take a cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> they are so stupid. Mark is shouting from the hallway. You couldn't kill me if you tried. <laughs> you bastard, you betrayed me. You are not good. You just a wimp. I'll get you. You just wait, you chicken. Cheep, cheep, cheep. Cheep, cheep, cheep. Chicken noises. <laughs> Mark's shouting fades down the hall. Chill out, Johnny. It's over. It's not over. Everybody betrayed me. I'm fed up with this world. <laughs> Johnny picks up a party glass and throws it at the full-length mirror, which shatters into small pieces. Some girls scream and back away with shocked expressions. Johnny whirls around and stomps angrily into the bathroom and slams the door. Immediately, there are more sounds of crashing glass coming from the bathroom. Lisa goes to the bathroom and tries to open the door but it is locked. She rattles the doorknob and screams at Johnny. Open the door! Come out, Johnny! Lisa bangs on the door with the heel of her hand. <laughs> Michelle comes over to Lisa. Calm down, Lisa. I never saw him like this. Peter comes over. Yeah, Lisa, it's getting late. Uh, I have to go home soon. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, I don't want to leave you like this. I'm all right. This is between Johnny and me, anyway. Claudette, wearing an apron, is sweeping up broken mirror glass and disposing of it. Don't worry, Lisa. I'll stay here and help you. Other people take the hint and start getting ready to leave. S several women pick up empty bowls and glasses and carry them to the kitchen. Some other people gather in a corner and whisper among themselves, laughing and finishing their drinks. Gradually, the people leave, thanking Lisa for inviting them. See you, Johnny. See you, Lisa. Happy birthday. Are you going to be all right, Lisa? See you, everybody. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Yep. See you later. Okay, see you later. See you later. Peter knocks on the bathroom door. Johnny, I'm, I'm leaving now. Um, I just want to shake your hand. Go on, Peter. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for everything. I want to talk to you before I leave. Johnny doesn't respond. Peter turns to Lisa. He's pretty stubborn, isn't he? We'll work it out. You can go on now. All right. You can call me anytime if you need me. See you later. Peter gives a little kiss on Lisa's cheek and turns to Michelle. See you next Friday, Michelle. Sure, Peter. You take care. Bye. Peter goes to the door. <laughs> Lisa, can I help you clean up? No thanks, Michelle. Mom's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for all your help. Where is your mom? I don't see her. She is in the kitchen if I know my mom. From the kitchen? I heard that, Lisa. Get your pretty little buns in here and help. Well, I guess I'll leave it to the family. Bye-bye. See you later. Thanks for your help. Bye. It was my pleasure. Michelle goes to the door. Lisa goes to the kitchen. Mom, what am I going to do? He won't come out of the bathroom. Don't bother me about it. <laughs> I'm not talking to him. He is prick. <laughs> he won't even help a poor old dying lady. Ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> she goes to the bathroom door and rattles the knob. Johnny! Hey! Hey, Johnny! I won't come out until she leaves. <sighs> Why are you being such a baby? Claudette comes out of the kitchen, drying her hands on a kitchen towel. Don't worry, I'm leaving. She is talking loud enough for Johnny to hear. She folds the towel and takes off her apron and folds it. I'm glad you could come, Ma. Thank you for your help. Don't mention it, dear. Call me tomorrow and we'll see how you feel. I'll get your coat. Lisa helps her mother with her coat and Claudette goes out the door. Good night, dear. 
Sweet dreams. Be good to Johnny. To Johnny. Good night, Johnny. I'll try. Good night, Mom. Scene 15. <laughs> Lisa goes to the bathroom door. Come out, come out, come out now, Johnny. She's gone. In a few minutes, bitch. <laughs> Who are you calling a bitch? You and your stupid mother. Lisa goes over to the phone and punches numbers, then walks holding it to her ear as far into the kitchen as the cord will stretch. Hi Mark, I need to talk to you. Don't pay any attention to Johnny. He's being a big baby. You know I love you very much. You are the sparkle of my life. <laughs> I can't live without you. I love you. Why don't you ditch this creep? I don't like him anymore. <laughs> I know, he's not worth it. Why don't I come up there and be with you? Sure, baby, come on up. I want your body. <laughs> you got it. I'm on my way. Bye. Lisa hangs up. Angrily, Johnny comes out of the bathroom. Who are you talking to? Lisa takes a canvas bag out of the closet. Nobody. Johnny walks to the answering machine and pushes some buttons. We'll just see about that. <laughs> oh yeah, answer machine. Boom! Hi Mark, I need to talk to you. Don't pay any attention to Johnny. He's being a big baby. You know I love you very much. You are the sparkle of my life. I can't live without you. I love you. Beep. Johnny, Johnny presses the pause button. You little tramp! How could you do this to me? I gave you seven years of my life! Let's see what else we have on this tape. No, no, stop, you little prick. I put up with you for seven years. You think you are an angel, but you are just like everybody. I treat you like a princess and you stab me in the back. I love you and I did everything to please you and now you betrayed me. How could you love him? Let's hear the tape. <laughs> Johnny presses the button. Beep. Why don't you ditch this creep? I don't like him anymore. And that's you. Sorry. Oh, that's you. What was it? I know he's not worth it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, he's not worth it. Why don't I come up there and be with you? Sure, baby, come on up. I want your body. <laughs> you got it. I'm on my way. Bye. Johnny picks up the machine and yanks it to break the wire and throws it against the wall. <laughs> ah, everybody betrayed me! I don't have a friend in the world! I'm leaving you, Johnny. Lisa goes to the bathroom with her bag, throws a few things into it, and runs out the door with it. Johnny is yelling while Lisa is ah! standing in front of her. Johnny picks up the TV and throws it through the wall. <laughs> there is a big noise and crash outside the window. He yells. Ah, screw the whole world. I don't need them. More glass shatters. Johnny tips the chair over, then the sofa, and grabs the lamp and throws it out of the broken window. <laughs> we hear a distant crash. He clears off the shelves with his hands. Books and other items fall on the floor. Whatever he sees, he throws against the wall. Someone bangs on the front door. What's going on in there? Open up, open up. Are you okay? There is more banging on the door. Johnny goes into the closet and throws out everything he sees and finds a wooden box about the size of a shoebox. He tries to pull it open, but he can't. He throws it to the floor, but it doesn't open. He kicks it, but it doesn't open. He pulls a piece of metal from the bottom of the chair and pries open the padlock and succeeds. He opens the box and, box and takes out a gun. He is crying. Why? 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 Why is this happening to me? Why? Why is this happening to me? I can't deal with this anymore. It's over. It's over. Suddenly, he stares into the closet. 
He reaches in and pulls out a sexy nightgown. <laughs> he holds it at arm's length. You tramp! You tramp! He throws it down on the floor. He reaches in and pulls out more of Lisa's clothes and throws them to the floor. He lies on the clothes, unzipping his zipper. <laughs> he is breathing and writhing with pelvic thrusts. <laughs> Finishes. <laughs> he sits up and picks up the gun. His finger is on the trigger. Tears are flowing down his cheeks. He throws the gun away from him. He is crying with his face in his hands. After a while, he crawls to the gun, still crying out loud. He reaches for the gun with his hand shaking. He picks it up and points it at the middle of his forehead. God, forgive me. <laughs> Johnny pulls the trigger. He collapses on the floor, gro groan groaning. <laughs> he is dead. Lisa opens the door to the apartment. Mark rushes in past her and kneels down beside Johnny's body. Also, several neighbors come in. <laughs> stands by the door with an expression of horror and her arms folded. Somebody call the police. Don't anybody touch anything. Call an ambulance. One person leaves the room to call. Johnny, open your eyes. Wake up. Mark holds Johnny's <laughs> arms and his head. Is he dead, Mark? Is he dead, Mark? Mark is very emotional. He touches the side of Johnny's neck. Yes, he is dead. <laughs> yes, he is dead, three exclamation points. Mark kisses Johnny on the forehead. Lisa puts her hand over her eyes and says, Oh, oh, my God. Mark stands beside Lisa and holds her tightly. Oh, well, the insurance has paid up $100,000. <laughs> Mark stands back away from Lisa. You're thinking of insurance at the time like this? <laughs> Don't you see? We're free to be together. Mark pushes Lisa against the wall. You tram, you killed him. You're the cause of all of this. Go to hell. I don't need your dirty money. I don't love you. As far as I'm concerned, you can drop off Earth. Pause. <laughs> Get out of my life. Get out of my life, Lisa. Mark kneels again beside Johnny, crying. Sirens can be heard in the distance. The end. <laughs> script is better than what happened with the movie, like no Chris R. Like, what do you know? I, I feel like like Peter, so when we wrote this script, Tommy and I were friends, but there was also another friend that Tommy had met in the acting class when I moved to LA who he wanted to play Peter. So Peter was based on kind of a real person, which is why he's a lot more significant in this script. And then when the Peter guy read the script, he's like, fuck that, I'm out of here. <laughs> so that Peter kind of became less, and there's more characters that came in. So, somebody had a question? Yeah, um, actually, I'm so starstruck, I actually forgot my question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm so good, no problem. <laughs> so any, more, any more questions after that? Sure. Um, so, Peter, uh, I, I know in the actual film, 
there was another character that took over. Just took over. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, even without that, uh, Peter seemed like a more prominent character was, in, yeah. in the script. Yeah. Is it because of uh, what happened with that real person? No, he had rewritten. A... Yeah, I think, well, when the, the Peter that. So he wanted us three to be in it, so the other friend that we had. Once he bailed and he rewrote it out of Chris R. But he cast that Peter once that script had already been written. Okay. So he wanted, you know, Peter quit the the actual Peter, and then it just was giving the line to somebody else. Okay. Why, why did Danny come into the picture? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> So I think uh, because Tommy always bases everybody on real characters, real people that he knew. Denny, I think, was there to represent like the all-American teenager. It was kind of like, it was kind of like Tommy, our friendship when I first moved to LA, when I was like first living in his apartment. You know, he's like, oh, don't plan too much. So I think that represented kind of youth to Tommy. And so Denny came in. And then he just kind of started throwing in the drug dealer stuff. <laughs> I don't know where that came from exactly, other than like him wanting to make it, you know, to kind of beef it up a little bit. Do you think that his feelings towards you, like at the, taking you under his wing, kind of? Yeah, like, exactly. Do you think that's what? what I mean? And then the three-way thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have run Beta Breakers, that's why we ran it together in 1999. So that's why he put it in the script. Um, he did beat me that day, but I did take like a 20 minute break, so. <laughs> and um, I've, I've seen The Room maybe like five times. Most of that was with like comedians doing live commentary, which really works well. So <laughs> I have not watched it like by myself. <laughs> Uh, so there's like a lot of mystery surrounding Tommy was so I've read up a lot on like the room and stuff and uh, one of the things I saw was that supposedly he financed the movie by selling leather jackets. Is that true? <laughs> he actually I think from what like what I've gathered what I've experienced that he did really well in retail in like the 80s and early 90s before I met him. So um, how that happened, I don't know. He told me he used to sell yo-yos and then he invested with that to sell jeans and jackets and, and then he invested in real estate. So I think he was able to like sell um, real estate and then that's how he financed the room and was able to put up a billboard for five years. So I mean, from what I know, it was le you know legit. How he got all that money is still a mystery, but I think that's what makes it interesting. Yeah. What was he like uh, as a roommate? <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, like I said, I think if you if you're between that age, where you just kind of don't know anything and don't give a shit, I think it's really fun. It did get a little tiresome because the phone couldn't ring before noon, so you're, like, you're trying to have like a normal life. He's like yelling at these, you know, a girl calling or a friend calling. Don't call, damn it. <laughs> And I'd have, I lied to everybody and just said he was my cousin. Yeah. So, like, the agent I was working with is like, dude, are you a gigolo? Just come out and say it. Like, <laughs> I'm easier on all of us. I was like, no, my cousin's just really hard to deal with. So, um, but it was nice kind of when I got space after that year. Uh, two part question. One, um, I noticed the distinct lack of footballs and tuxedos in, in this draft. Yeah, that came in later as we were rehearsing. It was very late in the game when the tuxedo football came about. It was so late that I got a tux last minute and wasn't able to have it fitted, so it looked like I was drowning in my head. <laughs> and uh, second part question, who's, who's creepier, Tommy or Ronnie the limo driver? Um, probably Ronnie. <laughs> Um, so you wrote the script for Best Friends, Best Fiends. What was that like working with him when you were writing rather than working with him when he was writing? Um, 
I think it was a lot easier when I was writing because I can I can think like him at this point, so I'm able to write dialogue that suits him really well. Like I feel like in this, he's trying to make Johnny like this natural all-American guy, and that's why it just feels like totally ridiculous. But when I wrote the character for him in Best Friends, it's something that really suits him, so he can kind of step into the part and give a more believable performance. And um, and as opposed to the room where we all got to speak like him. <laughs> so I think it was, it was easier in that regard. So you said Tommy wrote the first draft himself, right? Yeah, this thing, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> how, how did you feel about how he wrote the character that was meant to be played by you? Well, it was based, I mean, he saw the talent of Mr. Ripley. So there was like betrayal and like this extreme... You know, and I think he's he's always you know kind of had a paranoia that, you know, I think in a lot of ways he thought I was going to go to L.A. and like meet other people and not be his friend anymore. And so I think he's always had kind of fear of abandonment. So it was very much how he sees life in this, like kind of the the innocent, perfect character, and these people around him are doing all these crazy things. So it was very much in line with how you know how he saw drama. So he was almost like projecting onto you what he thought would happen. Almost. Yeah, but I think yeah, but I think that's kind of his view on life. So that, so he wrote this. I think it came from like Lisa was a past experience, and then he told me he had a best friend that you know betrayed him or something, and they don't talk anymore. So I think it was just a kind of repetitive nature of what he'd experienced in life, and then I just happened to be there to play the part. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for one more, folks. Did you um, help him uh, rewrite it, or did anyone help? So there was a, a friend he had named Chloe that helped. She was an older woman who kind of he read with, and she kind of coached him a little bit. Uh, and then the other friend he wanted to play, Peter, gave him a ton of notes on what to redo, because he's like, come on, man. It's like, they start the conversation on the phone, and then they're in person walking her to the door. <laughs> but to me, like, I felt this script represented so much who Tommy was that why try to change it or alter it when... I feel like Tommy needed to make the movie he wanted to make, and so I didn't, I didn't give him any notes. I just said, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> if this is the movie you want to make, go do it. Because I feel like if you try to start changing and tinkering it to make it normal, then it loses its appeal, I felt like. So I really wanted to see if you really would go through with it and hump a red dress. <laughs> Which he did. <laughs> tried to be supportive of what he wanted to make as opposed to changing it to what I thought could be good so <laughs> all right can we, uh, can we get our performers to take a bow in the role of narrator Bill Rick everybody in the role of Peter Matthew Schmidt in the role of Michelle Caitlin Feeney In the role of Claudette, Julia Selly, everybody. In the role of Lisa, Jackie Baker. And in the role of Tommy, Jim Burns. And of course, Greg Sestero, everybody. Thank you all so much. Talk to Greg. Greg's going to be behind the table. He has merchandise over there. And uh, yeah, feel free to hang out for a little while. And thank you again to all of our players. Excellent work.